reading from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Welcome to St. Paul Lutheran Church and School. I'm Pastor Steve, and we're so glad that you're here to join us for our online worship today. Uh, Of course, we want you to know that after this is all done, uh, we invite you to come and be with us here in our sanctuary and to to experience uh, the ministry here at St. Paul Lutheran Church and School. Uh, Right now, we have a new opportunity for you uh, to have a daily devotion. It's on Wednesday on our Facebook page, and it's launched on Wednesday evening, and so you can check out that devotional each Wednesday. So uh, that is there for you to to deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ and, and continue to be encouraged by God's Word. Of course, we are still asking our members here at St. Paul to continue to remember our ministry uh, by your your prayerful support and also your financial support. So please uh, remember that as, as we go through this time of pandemic. Again, thank you so much for joining us in worship. Stay safe and healthy. We miss you, we love you, and we look forward to that day when we can be together again.
we gather on this fourth Sunday of Easter, Good Shepherd Sunday. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Our opening sentences are drawn from Psalm 95, also known as the Venite. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. We come before our Lord at a time of confession and absolution. Let us come before God in true repentance, seeking forgiveness and amendment of our lives as we follow the Lord. We confess. Almighty God, we confess that we are indeed sinful. We have done the evil you forbid and have not done the good you demand. We do repent and are truly sorry for these our sins. Have mercy on us because of Jesus, our good shepherd. Grant that by the working of the Holy Spirit, we may follow where he leads until that time when we, by his grace, Come to dwell in your house forever. God has promised forgiveness to those who repent of their sins and turn to him for grace. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first of our scripture lessons is taken from the, the word of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as they had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. This is our lesson, the first of our readings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is taken for us from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 19 through 25. This is a gracious thing, when, mindful of God, one endures sorrow while suffering unjustly, for what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is the gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed." For you were straying like sheep, 
but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Dear friends, we note that our epistle lesson contained our theme verse for this past school year at St. Paul from 1 Peter chapter 2. We continue with the Alleluia in verse. If you are able, I invite you to please arise as we continue responsively with our Alleluia. Alleluia. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. Alleluia. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they do not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said again to them, Truly, I truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may please be seated. We join in speaking the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This is Dr. Carol, and this is what I look like now when I see patients. I'm also seeing patients at home on the computer. Things are very different. This is going to be a different kind of children's message. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Who can tell me what a shepherd does? That's right, he takes care of sheep. In Bible times, the shepherd took care of the flock and led them around. Listen to what Jesus says in John about himself. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. We are Jesus' sheep. He takes care of us. In these times when things are a little different and we feel a little lost, listen to what Jesus says to us about that. The sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought all of his own, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, 
for they know his voice. How do we know Jesus's voice? Well, we hear Jesus's voice in the Bible, like when pastor read the lessons. Maybe you have a Bible at home. In fact, the second graders just got their Bibles. Maybe you have a children's Bible or Bible storybooks. We hear Jesus's voice in songs about him and when the pastor preaches the sermon. So when we're feeling lost, we can follow Jesus, our good shepherd. Now, sheep are also not very good at protecting themselves. They were often in danger from a wolf or a wild animal. The shepherd's job was to protect them. Listen to what else Jesus says. I came that they may have life and have it fully. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus has already beaten our worst enemy, death, sin, and damnation. We get to go to heaven. Now, these are kind of times where some people are maybe a little worried or afraid. Jesus is going to take care of us. He's got this. Now, that doesn't mean you can't be worried or scared. You might even notice that moms or dads or adults are scared. But we should bring that worry to Jesus, and he will give us peace. Please pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for being our good shepherd. Thank you for leading us. Help us to hear your voice. Thank you for beating our enemies and protecting us. Help us when we are worried or afraid. Give us your peace. In your name, amen. One other thing, sometimes it's hard because we can't see Jesus. We're listening for his voice. Do you know what the word pastor means in Latin? It means shepherd. Jesus has given St. Paul's three really cool shepherds so that we can see how Jesus cares for us. Have a great week.
Grace, mercy, and peace are yours today. They are gifts to you from God our Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't know about you, but I need a reminder. It's good to be reminded. Many a times I've been saved by a reminder. Maybe you have too. You know, our minds can get so busy and preoccupied with all kinds of things that that we actually have things pushed from our minds. It's also easy to become overwhelmed by circumstances and situations. Fear, stress, anxiety can so fill our minds that it pushes other things out of our minds. And not just little things, but important things. We are living in uncharted waters, and maybe you're feeling overwhelmed now with fear and anxiousness, negativity, anger. All of those things can so fill our minds that it pushes those things that are important out of our minds. It's good to be reminded. This weekend, the fourth Sunday of Easter has long been known as Good Shepherd Sunday. And on this particular Good Shepherd Sunday, in the midst of our safer at home order for over a month, it is especially good to be reminded. As we gather today, it's just a reminder. But we all, can use a reminder. We have a good shepherd. Reminded of his promises, may we find comfort and hope in him. Reading now from that epistle lesson which was read earlier from 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Our good shepherd is with us. Those words are easy to believe when life is smooth. When the skies are blue and sunny and the wind, if there is a wind, is at our back, it's easy to believe those words. But what about when the storms strike? When the fierce winds blow against us and things come flying uncontrollably by? 
when sudden lightning strikes of trauma and tragedy and trouble come our way, when they flash right in front of us, pandemic, sickness, we hear the word cancer, a sudden death of a loved one. It all takes our breath away. And it makes our minds start to race. Where do we go? What do we do? What's going to happen to me? Just a reminder, our shepherd is with us. In the epistle of 1 Peter, Peter writes to Christians during a time when it was not such a pleasant thing to be a follower of Jesus Christ. They were going through suffering. And in their minds, they were wondering, is my shepherd with me? Have you ever wondered that? Maybe you're wondering that right now. Peter writes words of encouragement as a reminder to them and to us. He says, you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. You are in the hands of your protector and caretaker. You are in the hands of your good shepherd. We have a good shepherd who understands our suffering and pain. Jesus himself in his ministry endured suffering and pain, both emotionally and physically. He was rejected by his own people. He was betrayed by his loved disciple. He was rejected by those who followed him during his ministry. He experienced that pain of emotional rejection. He suffered physical pain. Pain that led him in the garden to feel that anguish. As he falls down and he, he prays, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And he sweat drops of blood in anguish. He suffered the physical pain of the beatings and the scourging and the crown of thorns and the pain of the cross. He endured pain and suffering and he understands. Friend, there is no pain or suffering that we will face in our life that our shepherd Jesus hasn't experienced also. Not only does he understand, but he knows what we're going through. And not only is he just there, he's able to help us. It's good to be reminded that we have a shepherd who knows what we're going through and is there to help us every day. We have a good shepherd who entrusted his life to the care and keeping of his heavenly father. We see that throughout Jesus' ministry. Jesus took time to pray. He would go away in private and pray to his father. He committed himself to his father. We see that before a miracle he he would perform, he would raise a prayer to his father. He committed everything he did to his father, into the loving hands of his father. 
And even in his darkest hour, on the cross, Jesus says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Confident of the loving hands of his Father, Jesus entrusts his life into his hands. It is good to be reminded that we can entrust our lives into the hands of our loving shepherd. The hands that are scarred by nails. To also remind us of the incredible love that our shepherd Jesus has for us. That he would lay down his life for the sheep. Reminded of our shepherd's amazing love, we can entrust our lives into his hands, into his care and keeping, knowing that he loves us, knowing that he will care for us, knowing that he will provide for us. Dear friends, in the hands of our loving shepherd, there is no better place to be. We have a good shepherd who bore in his body our sins on the cross. It's so good to be reminded that our good shepherd, Jesus, forgives us our sins. He forgives us because, you see, he's the one who paid for them. His perfect life for us, his blood shed for us, atones us from all our sins, and in him we are forgiven. It's good to be reminded that he forgives us all our sins, every one of them. And he gives us peace. Peace through his sacrifice for us. It's good to be reminded of our shepherd's resurrection. Because you see, it's in him who defeated death who conquered death, who went into it and came out of it, the only one who ever did, that in him we have eternal life. Through faith in Jesus, our shepherd, we live in that victory every day. We live in the victory of knowing that we are forgiven of our sins. We live in the victory that we have eternal life, the promise of our resurrection from the dead because of him. We live every day in our good shepherd, saved by his grace. What a blessing. What a treasure for us every single day. Max Lucado wrote a book called Traveling Light, and it's a book that is focused on the 23rd Psalm. And he tells us this story. He says, the story is told of a man on an African safari deep in the jungle. The guide before him had a machete and was whacking away the tall weeds and thick underbrush. The traveler, wearied and hot, asked in frustration, Where are we? Do you know where you are taking me? Where is the path? The seasoned guide stopped and looked back at the man and replied, I am the path. 
we ask the same questions, don't we? We ask God, where are you taking me? Where is the path? And he, like the guide, doesn't tell us. Like the traveler, we are unacquainted with this jungle. So rather than give us an answer, Jesus gives us a far greater gift. He gives us himself. Does he remove the jungle? No, the vegetation is still thick. Does he purge the predators? No, danger still lurks. Jesus doesn't give hope by changing the jungle. He restores our hope by giving us himself. And he has promised to stay until the very end. I am with you always to the very end of the age. We need that reminder. We all need that reminder. For all of us need hope. So what jungle are you in? It could be just about anything, can it? Just a reminder, no matter what it is, no matter what your jungle is, you have a guide. You have a shepherd. You are in his care and keeping. Jesus has given you himself. Storms will come and go, but you will not face anyone alone. Jesus Christ, the Lord of life, comes alongside of us to shepherd us and to lead us all the way home. Folks, it's just a reminder, but we all need a reminder. For all of us need hope. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all our human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in true faith unto Christ Jesus, the overseer of our soul. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Halky, for sharing God's word with us this day. We continue now with the prayer of the church. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the whole church that through it, the goodness of God may be shared and the good news of salvation joyfully be proclaimed throughout all the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are in need, assured of the shepherd's care for all the sheep. Help us to meet the needs of those who travel with us through life as we are led by our good shepherd day by day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families and everyone in them. Together, help us to follow the good shepherd as one flock in which all dwell together in love and unity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those whose tables are set in difficult or challenging places, whose lives know want or discord or sadness or continuing illness. Gently guide them with your rod and staff, good shepherd, and keep them ever with you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. 
With gratefulness, we remember those who already dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Inquire us to pass throughout our earthly journeys with faith and hope as we heed the voice of our good shepherd and follow in his ways. And we bring before you, O Lord, those prayers on our hearts and our lips in a moment of silent prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. We join in praying the prayer our Lord has taught us. The service draws to a close as we receive the benediction, the good word from God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of our risen Lord, amen.